Life was mostly predictable for me, Sarah, a 30-year-old fiercely climbing the corporate ladder. From my college days to the boardroom meetings, I had it all planned out. But the plot twist in my well-structured life script? Marrying Alex and forming an unexpected alliance with his mother, Linda. Alex and I met in the least romantic of places, the university library. I was buried in finance books, he was wrestling with computer science. Our eyes met over a pile of textbooks, and the rest, as they say, is history. We were two college kids, juggling classes and dreams, but together, we were invincible. Alex was the calm to my storm, the laughter to my seriousness. Our friend Brian, a pal from college days, played a big part in our lives too. He was the one who vouched for Alex, getting him a job as an IT guy at his firm. Brian and his wife, Rachel, were like the couple version of that cozy, familiar cafe you love, always welcoming, always a good time. Then came Linda, Alex's mom. I'd heard the horror stories, the meddling, the judging. But Linda? She was different. Warmth radiated from her like the sun on a chilly morning. She welcomed me not just into her family but into her heart. Sarah, you're exactly what Alex needs. A strong, smart woman. He's a lucky man, Linda would say, her eyes twinkling with sincerity. And somehow, her words made me feel not just accepted, but cherished. Our relationship was a dance of mutual respect and affection. Even on my busiest days, I'd make time to call her, just to check in. Hey, Linda, it's Sarah. How are you holding up? Oh, dear, just the usual. But tell me, how's work? Don't let them overwork you, Linda would reply, her voice always laced with concern. We'd chat about everything and nothing, from her legendary apple pie recipe to the latest office politics. Linda wasn't just my mother-in-law, she was a confidant, a friend. We were a trio bound by love, but even the strongest bonds can fray under the weight of unspoken truths and unmet expectations. And as the days rolled into nights, the cracks began to widen, setting the stage for a storm that was silently brewing on the horizon. The glow of my career cast a shadow over my personal life. With each promotion and business trip, the distance between Alex and me grew. Our home, once a sanctuary, started to feel more like a hotel for me, a place to crash between flights. One evening, I returned from a grueling two-week trip. The house greeted me with a cold silence and a mess that seemed to scream neglect. Pizza boxes piled up like a monument to Alex's apathy and the laundry basket overflowed, a testament to the widening gap in our relationship. Alex, this is ridiculous. It looks like a dump here. I snapped, my frustration boiling over as I surveyed the chaos. He looked up from his computer, his eyes barely registering my presence. Hey, Sarah. Chill. Yeah, it's just a bit of mess. No big deal. No big deal? I work my butt off, and you can't even manage to keep the house clean? Is that asking too much? My voice was sharp, the words slicing through the tense air. He shrugged, a dismissive gesture that fueled my anger. You know I'm not Mr. Clean. Why fuss about it? Why? Because I live here too, Alex. Because we're supposed to be a team. The words tumbled out, raw and unfiltered. The conversation, if you could call it that, ended with cold silence. Our home felt more like a battleground, our conversations reduced to terse exchanges and resentful glances. The next day, Linda called. Her voice, usually so warm and comforting, carried a note of concern that made my heart sink. Sarah, dear, is everything all right? You sounded off yesterday. I sighed, the weight of the unspoken truths heavy on my chest. It's just, it's been tough, Linda. The house, Alex, everything seems to be falling apart. Linda was silent for a moment, then spoke with a firmness that was rare for her. Sarah, you're doing your best. But Alex needs to step up. You can't carry the load alone. Her words were a bomb, a reminder that I wasn't in this turmoil alone. 
but they were also a stark reminder of the growing rift between Alex and me. That night, as I lay in bed, the moonlight casting a soft glow in the room, I couldn't shake the feeling of disquiet. The once comforting silence now felt oppressive, filled with the echoes of our failing relationship. Alex, we need to talk. This can't go on. I whispered into the darkness. He turned to face me, his face a mask of indifference. What's there to talk about, Sarah? It's just a bit of mess, not the end of the world. But it's not just the mess, Alex. It's us. We're drifting apart, and if we don't do something, I'm afraid we'll end up strangers living under the same roof. He didn't respond, the silence between us growing louder than any words could. In that moment, I realized that the cracks weren't just beginning to show, they were widening, threatening to split the very foundation of our marriage. The days leading up to Thanksgiving were supposed to be filled with the warmth of family and the joy of togetherness. However, life had other plans. Linda was hospitalized due to an exacerbation of her chronic illness. The hospital's sterile, impersonal halls were a stark contrast to the festive atmosphere we had hoped for. Sitting by her hospital bed, I held her hand, her usual warmth diminished by the cold touch of four needles. Linda, you won't spend Thanksgiving here. I'll pick you up and we'll celebrate at home, just like we always do, I assured her, squeezing her hand gently. She smiled weakly, a shadow of her usual vibrant self. Thank you, dear. But what about your work? You're always so busy, she murmured, concern for me outweighing her own discomfort. Don't worry about that, Linda. You're more important, I replied, though the weight of my responsibilities loomed large in my mind. However, just as I was ready to put work aside for family, my boss dropped a bombshell. He called me into his office, his expression grim. Sarah, we need you on an urgent business trip. It's critical, and I wouldn't ask if it weren't absolutely necessary. I felt torn, caught between my commitment to my family and my duties at work. But sir, it's Thanksgiving, and my mother-in-law is in the hospital. I promised her I'd be there. I explained, hoping for some understanding. He sighed, his gaze fixed on some unseen Dilsera. I understand your predicament, Sarah, but this is a matter of great importance. We're counting on you. The weight of my professional life was a burden I was accustomed to carrying, but it had never before felt so heavy. With a heavy heart, I turned to the one person I thought I could rely on. Alex, I have to go on this trip. It's urgent. Can you please make sure your mom is taken care of? Pick her up from the hospital on Thanksgiving Day. She shouldn't be alone on the holiday. I pleaded, the worry evident in my voice. Alex, who had been more distant lately, seemed to understand the gravity of the situation. He nodded, a glimmer of the man I once knew shining through. Of course, Sarah. I'll take care of mom. You don't have to worry about a thing. He assured me, his voice steady and reassuring. Reluctantly, I packed my bags, my mind a chaotic mix of client meetings and concern for Linda. As I left, I glanced back at our home, a place that once represented comfort and love, now a symbol of the sacrifices and choices that define our lives. On the trip, amidst the endless meetings and business strategies, my thoughts constantly drifted back to Linda and Alex. I found myself checking my phone incessantly, hoping for an update, a sign that everything was as it should be. But it was the silence that spoke volumes, the absence of messages or calls that painted a picture far from the reassuring promises made. As the critical hours ticked away, the unease in my heart grew, a foreboding sense that this Thanksgiving was going to be unlike any other we had ever experienced. The silence of my phone was deafening, each missed call to Alex a growing echo of my anxiety. The business trip, usually a whirlwind of meetings and networking, felt like a slow crawl, each moment stretching out with worry for Linda and frustration towards Alex. I tried calling again, the phone ringing hopelessly into the void. Come on, Alex, pick up. I muttered under my breath, the bustling airport around me fading into a blur. The call went to voicemail, again. My mind raced with worst-case scenarios, each more troubling than the last. In desperation, I dialed Linda's number, 
half expecting the same cold silence. But after a few rings, her frail voice came through, weak and tinged with sadness. Linda, it's Sarah. I've been trying to reach Alex. How are you? Is everything set for Thanksgiving? My words tumbled out, a mix of hope and dread. Oh, Sarah. Linda's voice broke, a soft sob cutting through. I'm still at the hospital. Alex, he, he didn't come. My heart sank, a heavy weight of betrayal and worry settling in. What? But he promised. He said he'd be there for you. The words felt hollow, a stark contrast to the chaos of emotions inside me. I know, dear. I waited, but... Linda's voice trailed off, the hurt unmistakable. Anger and concern battled within me. How could Alex do this? How could he leave his own mother alone in the hospital, especially on Thanksgiving? I knew I had to act, and fast. Linda, I'm so sorry. I'm coming back right now. I'll sort this out, I promise. With a shaky hand, I dialed my boss, the urgency in my voice cutting through the formalities. Sir, I need to go back. It's an emergency. My family needs me. I'm sorry, but I can't stay. To my relief, he understood. Go, Sarah. Family is important. We'll manage here. The relief was short-lived, replaced by a sense of urgency. I rushed through the airport, each step fueled by a mix of worry for Linda and a growing anger towards Alex. As the plane took off, my mind raced with unanswered questions. Why didn't Alex pick up Linda? Where was he? And most importantly, what would I find when I got back? The flight felt like an eternity, each mile home a mix of dread and determination. I was going back, not just to salvage the remains of Thanksgiving, but to confront the unsettling truths that lay hidden behind Alex's unanswered calls. After the draining flight and the tense drive, the world seemed to slow down as Linda and I approached her house. I managed to pick her up from the hospital. The night was unusually quiet, the kind of quiet that feels heavy, loaded with unspoken truths waiting to burst forth. I glanced at Linda, her face etched with the pain of her son's betrayal. Her silent tears were a sharp reminder of the reality we were about to face. I reached for her hand, offering a silent promise of support, no matter what lay behind the closed door of her home. Pulling into the driveway, I hesitated for a moment before picking up my phone. It was time to confront Alex, to demand the truth that had been so carelessly twisted. I dialed his number, my heart pounding against my chest. After a few rings, Alex's voice came through, casual, unaware of the storm that was about to hit. Hey, Sarah. What's up? Alex, where are you? And where's your mom? My voice was steady, each word a carefully laid trap. There was a brief pause, and then, oh, mom's right here. We're at her place, getting things ready for Thanksgiving, just like we planned. The lie was so blatant, so hurtful, that for a moment, I couldn't breathe. Linda, sitting beside me, let out a soft whimper, her heartbreak audible in the cramped space of the car. I ended the call and turned to Linda, her face a portrait of a mother's heart shattered by her own son's lies. We're going to get to the bottom of this, I assured her, though my voice trembled with my own swirling emotions. Linda nodded, a silent warrior bracing for the battle ahead. We got out of the car and walked up to the front door. The familiarity of the place, once a symbol of family gatherings and joyous celebrations, now felt tainted, corrupted by the web of lies spun within its walls. Linda, with a hand that trembled ever so slightly, unlocked the door. We stepped inside, the dimly lit hallway leading us towards the faint sounds of conversation and laughter, a stark contrast to the somber mood that clung to us like a second skin. As we moved quietly towards the living room, the reality of the situation hit me like a physical blow. There, in a scene that seemed surreal in its normalcy, was Alex, sitting cozily next to Rachel, Brian's wife. The laughter, the intimacy of their posture, spoke volumes of the betrayal that had been hiding in plain sight. For a moment, time stood still. 
The air was thick with tension, the silence a stark prelude to the storm of emotions about to be unleashed. Linda's presence beside me was both a source of strength and a poignant reminder of the pain inflicted not just on a wife, but on a mother. The silence in the room was deafening, the air thick with the tension of a moment that none of us could have imagined. Alex and Rachel, caught in the act, looked like deer in headlights, their guilt written all over their faces. What the hell is this, Alex? My voice was a mix of rage and disbelief, my words cutting through the silence like a knife. Alex stuttered, his usual laid-back demeanor shattered by the gravity of the situation. Sarah, I, it's not what it looks like. I can explain. Explain? Explain how you could do this to your own mother. To me? I shot back, the fury in my voice making my hands tremble. Linda stood silently, her eyes fixed on her son, the pain and betrayal in her gaze more piercing than any words could ever be. Rachel, her face pale and tear-streaked, finally found her voice. Sarah, please, don't tell Brian. This was a mistake. A terrible mistake. Mistake? You call this a mistake? I couldn't contain the bitterness in my voice. You both made choices, selfish, hurtful choices. And now, you want to sweep it all under the rug like it's nothing? Alex tried to speak, to salvage what little he could from the wreckage of lies. Sarah, please, let's talk about this. We can fix it. Fix it? How, Alex? By pretending that your affair, your betrayal of everything we stood for, never happened? The room felt smaller, the walls closing in with the weight of the truth now laid bare. Linda, who had been a silent witness to the unfolding drama, finally spoke, her voice a soft yet formidable force. Alex, how could you? After everything, how could you do this to your family? Alex's gaze dropped, unable to meet the eyes of the two women he had hurt the most. The room was filled with the sound of broken hearts and shattered trust, the aftermath of choices that could never be undone. Rachel, her composure crumbling, pleaded through her tears. It was a mistake. I never meant to hurt anyone. Mistakes are forgetting to pick up milk, Rachel, not having an affair with your friend's husband. I snapped, the rawness of my emotions leaving no room for sympathy. The confrontation was a whirlwind of anger, hurt, and disbelief, a storm that left no one untouched. Each word spoken was like a piece of the life we had known, falling away to reveal the harsh reality beneath. In the wake of the turmoil, the world seemed to stand still, the rhythm of life disrupted by the discordant notes of betrayal and loss. Linda and I found ourselves adrift in a sea of uncertainty, clinging to the fragile raft of our shared pain. The living room, once a hub of laughter and warmth, now felt like an echo chamber of our shattered dreams. Linda and I sat, a silent understanding between us, the weight of recent revelations heavy in the air. Sarah, I just can't fathom it, how Alex could do this. And Brian, poor Brian. Linda's voice trailed off, the edges of her words frayed with sorrow and disbelief. I nodded, my heart heavy. I know, Linda. It's like we've been living in a parallel universe, and now we've been thrust back into a harsh reality. The silence that followed was laden with unspoken thoughts and fears. The future, once a canvas of shared dreams and plans, now loomed before us, daunting and undefined. Sarah, what are you going to do now? Linda's question, soft and tentative, broke the stillness. I sighed, the weight of decision heavy on my shoulders. I've been thinking about that a lot. Divorce seems like the only path forward. I can't. I won't stay tethered to a lie. Linda reached out, her hand a warm presence in the chill of our disillusionment. I support you, whatever you decide. You're strong, Sarah. Stronger than you know. Her words were a balm to my weary soul, a reminder that even in the darkest times, we are never truly alone. The days that followed were a blur of activity, a flurry of paperwork and decisions that seemed to strip the color from the world. The word divorce echoed in the empty spaces of our home, a stark reminder of all that had been lost. Alex's attempts at reconciliation fell on deaf ears. His presence, once a source of comfort and joy, 
was now a specter of betrayal, a ghost haunting the corridors of my heart. Sarah, please. Can we not try to work through this? I'm sorry, more sorry than you can imagine, Alex pleaded, his words a desperate attempt to bridge the chasm his actions had created. Sorry doesn't undo what you did, Alex. It doesn't erase the pain, the lies. I need to find my way forward, and I can't do that with you. I replied, my voice a steady anchor in the storm of my emotions. The revelation of Alex and Rachel's affair sent shockwaves through our lives, but the fallout didn't end there. Brian, who had been a friend and ally, was blindsided by the betrayal. His decision was swift and final. Alex lost not only his wife but his job as well, the consequences of his actions leaving him isolated and exposed. Rachel, too, faced the harsh aftermath as Brian filed for divorce, the trust in their marriage irreparably broken. The garden was serene, a tranquil oasis where Linda and I sat, surrounded by the vivid tapestry of autumn. The air was crisp, carrying the scent of change, a reminder that even in life's coldest moments, warmth and beauty could still be found. Linda broke the silence, her voice thoughtful. You know, Sarah, life never stops surprising us. Just when we think we have it all figured out, it turns everything upside down. I smiled, feeling the truth in her words. It sure does. But somehow, it's in these upside down moments that we really find our strength, don't you think? She nodded, her eyes reflecting the wisdom of experiences lived and lessons learned. Absolutely. Strength and maybe a bit of stubbornness too. Our laughter mingled with the gentle rustle of leaves, a symphony of resilience and renewed spirit. The conversation drifted, touching on memories, dreams, and the open road ahead. I've been giving it a lot of thought. I began, the idea that had been simmering in my mind now ready to be shared. I think it's time for a new chapter, Linda. A new place, new faces, a new start. Linda's eyes widened slightly, a mix of surprise and understanding. A new place? That's a big step. But if anyone can make it work, it's you, Sarah. What's on your mind? Somewhere far from here. A place where the past doesn't linger around every corner. I want to rediscover myself, outside the shadows of what's happened. I said, the words painting a picture of hope and liberation. Linda reached for my hand, her touch a warm anchor in the sea of uncertainty. You'll always have a place here, Sarah. No distance can change that. And remember, I'm just a phone call away, day or night. I squeezed her hand, grateful beyond words. I know, Linda. And that means the world to me. But I feel like this is something I need to do. To prove to myself that I can start over, that I can build something new from the ground up. We all need that sometimes, a fresh start, Linda mused, her gaze following the flight of a lone bird across the sky. And while you're out there, building your new life, never forget how strong you are, Sarah. You've weathered a storm many couldn't, and you've come out stronger on the other side. The sun began its descent, painting the sky in shades of orange and pink. The garden, a riot of colors and life, stood as a testament to new beginnings and the resilience of nature. As the day faded into evening, the garden became a silhouette against the twilight sky. Linda and I sat in comfortable silence, two souls connected by shared experiences and an unbreakable bond. With Linda's support in my heart and the lessons of the past in my mind, I stepped into the new chapter, ready to embrace whatever lay ahead. The journey wasn't about forgetting or leaving behind, it was about moving forward, carrying the wisdom of experience as a beacon in the journey towards a new horizon.